Richard Listen Show, live from our new location, All Access, and I'm echoing, but we'll roll with that. Uh, today is an exciting day. We deal with all kinds of change and high performers here, and today I'm honored to be finally in our new location. Thanks uh, for our listeners who've been patient in the last month as we transitioned, just like we introduce you to high performers and athletes who deal with all kinds of change. We also had to adjust to our, our new home. And so thank you for being patient with us. Uh, today is exciting. It's um, been an interesting month. We're here, of course, with our co-host, Caitlin Patricia Weiler. Hello, um, hello, hello. She's finally settling into her new abode and made the drive up to be here with us today. Today we're entering into the realm of comedy. I'm hoping to ask a little bit about uh, some some ringside commentary as well. Being a former uh, WWE fan, maybe current too. We'll see what Phil can get out of me. Uh, today's guests um, have some new and exciting news to bring to us as well. Today in studio we have Mr. Phil Medina and Modski, his friend and new. Um, co-partner in their own radio station, I believe. So they're going to be sharing a little bit with us what it's like to be a comedian, get on stage, perform, be at your best when you're not at your best, um, and a little bit about what they're working on. Uh, but first, Caitlin, how are you doing? Doing wonderful. How are you? Good. <laughs> Mine is putting on all those miles, right? Driving all around <laughs> California. Yeah. Does your, uh, does your, uh, energy drink provide a mileage exemption, or how's that working? <laughs> They're giving me extra <laughs> miles through energy, right? <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, uh, welcome and thanks for joining us here, uh, Phil Medina and Motski. Of course, man. Thanks for having us. Uh, I got this is a beautiful studio. It's really nice. It's uh, we're not used to anything like this. <laughs> we aren't either. We're, we're gonna get used to it though, right? We uh, we live in Oxnard. And our studio is actually in a trap house, so this is uh, this is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, man, uh, I, when you said top performing athletes, I was like, I would think we're on the wrong show. <laughs> what is it get us into? Yeah, because we just had McDonald's. <laughs> And that's right. You guys are connected with Citric, and, and he was amazing on the show. He came on, and uh, he was. We did his whole uh, new rap video, um, so that was you know amazing for us because here's someone who's been out there and acting, and yet is trying to go into different ventures. So when we talk about high performers, you know, it's like probably for you guys, it's natural if you get on stage. You know, I've seen some of your comedy bits and and, and YouTube clips, and, and and maybe some of that's just like becomes old hat, but. For us and for our listeners, they want to know, like, you know, how do you, how do you get up there and gear up? Um, yes, because that's on my bucket list to do stand-up comedy, and really? it's pretty scary. <laughs> I, I would change that bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, I don't know, like, like, go to the Great Wall of China or something. Well, I've done all those kind of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm just, something different. Uh, that comedy is scary? <laughs> no, like, well, just funny enough because you have to be able to talk on the fly, and you've got the pressure. If you're not making all the people laugh, then what do you do? <laughs> you better start doing cartwheels <laughs> or something. Uh, you know what? It's, uh, it's, it's different. And speaking of Cedric, real quick, Cedric actually made made his uh, stand-up comedy debut uh, this past Saturday. Yes, I saw that, I heard about I saw that, that. on Instagram. He made his uh, stand-up comedy debut, and uh, uh, I'm the executive producer for a brand-new stand-up series uh, that, that uh, is going to be airing on a website, uh, notyouraveragecomedy.com, uh, and Citric, we gave Citric a spot, That's, and I would have to say he did very extreme, yeah. well. He did very well, yes. Yeah, he did, like, really good. So, I mean, overall, we're like, Citric is like the... Uh, the jack of all entertainment trades. Uh, Cedric was on. Did he? I don't know if he talked about this. Not. Did he mention he was on Sabido Gigante? He, he, no, no. Uh, our, our producer Albert did mention that, but we didn't. We didn't get to it. We got. <laughs> that is so dope because that is actually like the Tonight Show in Spanish in Mexico. Really, and that guy featured yes. on that. Yeah, it, it's a but huge as, thing. As a rapper, as a Spanish rapper. Yeah, before, before the acting, before he became a male model, uh, that's what he did. And uh, no, but but for you to want to do stand up comedy, that that's amazing. And whenever you're ready, you let me know, and I'll give you the stage time. Oh my god, awesome it. pressure, right? Oh yeah, because if you, I will be like, if you if you do well, I'll be the first one to be congratulated. If and you if don't I... do well, I will be the first one to be like. 
Boo! <laughs> when they do, they take that hook right, right off the stage. <laughs> oh, somebody died doing that. We can't do that anymore. Oh, okay. We're, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a pending lawsuit Thank right God. now. Yeah, I, went through, I went through my nine lives. <laughs> oh, so, that, so, so, so that's a joke, but that's a good point, right? Because, like, did, did Citric come to you and say, hey, like, I want to know how I'm doing. You know, I want the feedback right away. I mean, how do you do that as comics with one another? Um, I, I, I uh, I'm kind of like the uh, the. I was being too nice for a long time, <laughs> and uh, Cedric did well. I, I told Cedric he did well, and I, and I would it'd be I'd be doing no favors to him if he didn't do well, and I told him he did well. But he did really good. Uh, comics today, though, uh, it's weird. Uh, I've been doing this for ten years. So comics today, they're uh, would you say they're like a little full of themselves? Not not yeah. not the not the guys who've been doing it for a while. The new up and comer guys who are still doing open mics and stuff. I have been in a couple comedy clubs where they're high fiving each other after an open mic. Talking about killed it. I'm like, uh, you can't kill an open mic. You just you can kill a regular show at, at, at the improv, but uh, so so no. Now I'm at the point where I'll tell somebody if they suck. And if they want to keep doing my shows, I'm like, well, you got to get better. You, if you don't get better, then you're kind of wasting my time, the audience's time, your time. Eh, go home and get your shine box, you know? It's just uh, yeah. you know, it's time to step it up. So how do you deal with that? Because it's it's tough, clearly, you know, being in front of an audience, you want that approval. The self-esteem is a fragile thing. We want to feel like we're improving. So how do you help a young comic develop that skin to be, like, open to feedback, open to mentorship, and yet... Um, you know, getting a little bit of a pat in the back along the way. Well, the first thing I tell them is I probably don't quit their job at McDonald's. And then the, <laughs> no, uh, the first thing I would probably tell, I mean, Monsky's only been doing comedy a year. So, and he comes on the road with me a lot. So almost all the time for that whole year. All the time, man. Um, so mentoring him has been like kind of a special thing because uh, he listens. He takes the constructive criticism. He takes the feedback. Um, but like I, the best thing to tell a young comic is don't go up there and and just want to just destroy and just kill the room. You actually learn a lot more bombing. So fail. Right. Fail. It's okay to fail. What is it? Fail often. Fail early. Fail uh, forward. Fail forward. Because if you fail, you'll get a life lesson out of that. You'll learn like, hey, it's probably not okay to tell that joke. And if, if you fail as much as you can, within a year or two, you're going to be real good because you know what not uh, what you're not going to do up there. So, yeah. Yeah, and that, well, you just touched on a key to performance psychology because they teach that in all kinds of sports, right? If, uh, you know, Yasiel Puig, uh, you know, gets three hits out of ten, right? He's a Hall of Famer, right? Right. right. So, so how, do you, how do you teach that in baseball, right? Like we got to learn how to shake off the strikeouts or the errors. Now, for a comedian, though, how do you how do you encourage that to go from uh, your what you're describing, like, hey, I'm so excited that I just did my five minute set at all for you know just my friends who are going to approve of me to go into a place where you're willing to fail? Well, that was something that with Monsky especially, uh, he did his first show. Most guys start off in a bar. That's where I started in a bar in Madera, California. You guys probably haven't even heard of that town, uh, but it does exist. All thirteen people are there. Uh, but uh, Monsky started off at Levity Live in front of like five hundred people, and they they knew who he was because of our podcast. So they knew who he was. He did really well, and I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna take you on the road with me, and now we're gonna see how you do uh, in uh, in El Paso, well, Texas. But. I tell people, people are like, oh, my God, you've only been coming for one year. But I also, I, I've been doing online radio for five years. You know, I used to host hip-hop shows. So I've been on stage a lot. I've, I, I have done that, just not the comedy side. So it's not like one day I was at McDonald's and the next day I was doing comedy in front of 500 people. That You know, people have to understand that. That's that's what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, I even think of it as like that, that arena for comedy. You know, as an actress, you constantly fail forward all the time because you fail a million times more than you actually succeed. Right. right. And but, but in this arena, like you're doing that failure in front of, like you said, hundreds or thousands of people versus <laughs> right. one person. Exactly. And so so to be you have to be able to be okay with failing. because And I think that's where a lot of false sense of... Uh, accomplishment comes from from these newer comics that don't know that they failed that are like they got one or two smatters of applause or like a <laughs> or a, uh they think that's good it's like no dude that's not good <laughs> like fail go ahead it's okay um especially with like this this new generation of kids it's not okay to fail because everything on like instagram says it's awesome and so they don't know how to fail and that's kind of a sad thing because this uh, this upcoming generation that we have of, of 
performers or, or, or athletes, they don't know how to fail. And that's kind of scary. Because yeah. the minute you get negative feedback, um, <laughs> uh, getting cues from our new studio here. <laughs> we were all like, <laughs> um, so please adjust your seat. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it does. I think you have to stand up and then it'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I stole one of those chairs. So, so, so yeah, so we're talking about, you know, fear of getting criticism. Hold on. Oh, there, there we go. go. Teamwork, Teamwork. Yeah, how Teamwork many, makes a dream work. There you go. How there many it comics does it take to fix a <laughs> chair? Just, one for sure. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I didn't make that one up myself. So, <laughs> um, so, so, but in order to be willing to f uh, fail, guys, there's got to be a motivation, right? There's got to mm -hmm. be something driving you that's right. beyond, like, just approving the five people in Madeira, because otherwise, even that's scary, right? When your bar is really low. So, what what got you motivated? You know, was there something early on? Super hilarious. You thing. know, yeah. this is what it was. I had no intention of being a stand-up comic. Didn't want to do it. I saw a comedian one time uh, that was opening for Gabriel Iglesias uh, in in a, in a in another small town in Hamford, California, and I was like, that is like that guy's so funny. I think I can do that. And that was like in 2001. Then I kind of just forgot about it. I was young. I was like 20 years old. I was like, nah, whatever. And uh, then I was, uh, I had just passed all my tests to be a California State Correctional Officer. And I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then uh, something happened and it didn't go through. So uh, what, what ended up happening was this guy who, uh, who does stand, who I don't even, I think he still does it. Uh, he was like, hey, you're funny. Uh, let me have you host a show. And I was like, no, that's so dumb. Like, why would I want to do that and embarrass myself? Who, who is this guy? Had, he, had just a friend of you? I kind of don't even want to mention his name because okay. he's kind of, it's like, he hates my guts now. Because, <laughs> like, he's still doing, like, the open mics after all these years. And uh, so, whatever. But anyway. Uh, he, but he uh, picked up on, on a skill of yours. Yeah, well, he was just like, hey, you're funny. I'm like, I don't want to do this. It's so dumb. But I did it. And that led to the last 10 years of of uh, just failing and picking yourself up and driving forward. Because once you get in the entertainment industry, uh, the minute that you have the passion to do it, it's it's all you. That's all you want to do. You live, eat, breathe this business. And if you can't do that, you're, don't, you're, not, you're not cut out for this. That's really, I mean, you're an actress as well, so you know what I'm talking about. Yep. If you don't... Um, if this is not the first thing you think about. I mean, there's times I have put, I have lost many relationships because of this. I I have missed many birthdays because of this. Uh, I have missed anniversaries because of this. But this is what I love more than anything in this world. Um, I've gotten news, I've gotten like horrible news, right? Like 10 minutes where I'm supposed to right. go on stage right. and get a standing ovation because this is what I love. So that's a good good lead in you. I mean, how do you deal with that when life intersects with your need to perform for for others? Yeah, how do you kind of get it hits yourself the back burner. Up? I was say it's, you flip a switch, right? It's a I switch. Do it too, and it's not easy. But if you don't have that skill, you can't survive. You can't, and so, and that's the thing, and that is the exact same thing. If you if you don't have that it factor, you won't survive. I mean, this is all I do. I don't do. I don't have a regular job. Uh, well, I guess kind of now, cause, <laughs> but before, I mean, I left the grocery industry, which, you know, making $75,000 a year to come do this, that's a leap, you know? So, but you have that, that instinct to, to, to be able to survive. So that's what drives me. That's what drove me as, as not wanting to get up at four o'clock in the morning every day to, to go deal with, to make someone else's dream a reality. It was time to make my dream a reality. Yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering, maybe it's become natural for you because you do it for so long, but is there something in that, you know, hour before show, you got some bad news? Like, do you check in with Modeski? Do you, do you got something you, you get in front of the mirror? I mean, is mantra something that, you know, you could share with our listeners who are like, man, I'm terrified of the next open mic. You, you know, know, I definitely, Modeski is like my, my right hand guy. Like he is, uh, he makes sure that like right before there's a show that he's out there. I mean, if you, if, the, <laughs> If you could watch him, he's making sure roadblocks are out of the way before I get even into the building because he's making sure everything's like 
clear, ready to go. Because the last thing he wants is like to have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> because this feeling you see right now is not the feel at a show. <laughs> He's a whole different person. He's Especially very... when I'm producing. Yeah. So is it Roblox like people trying to talk to you? Is it Roblox like your water's not where you need? It to no, be no, right no, no, no. Not is even it... like that. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not like that. No. no, no, no. Nothing like that. It's just um, if there's if there's something that could hinder uh, a show, like hey, this. We we just lost ticket sales, or we just lost this, or or the sound's not right. I mean, we had an issue this weekend where the sound was not right, and he did everything he could until I had to get involved. And then when I have to get involved, <laughs> watch, it's, watch out. Yeah, it's not funny anymore. <laughs> no, because when it comes to this business, I also have a type A personality, and when you're dealing with people that don't. It's incredibly stressful, and it's incredibly like, why are you even working for me right now if you can't get this task done? Maybe I should just do it myself. I'm that guy. I'm a total dick. <laughs> it's just, but um, he, it's just to get yourself in that might in that right state of mind. Like, like, like for instance, right. this past weekend we had a comic just cancel. He said, "Hey, I can't make it. I'm not feeling well." I'm like, <laughs> "You're like closing the show." So what am I supposed to do? And if it wasn't for Monsky, like saying, dude, this is supposed to happen. You're supposed to close it. And I'm like, but I'm already producing. Like, I can't stop what I'm doing. To, so, but again, it's a switch. And what happened when you went on the stage on Friday night? I did all right. He, he did amazing. He did I, amazing. I did all right. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so there is that switch that you have to turn on. And you have to just say, Tunnel vision. But that's a good plan because that happened to me this weekend with, with coaching soccer, a last second change, and I nearly like lost my, my brain. With, right. I mean, when you perform and you prepare. Right. Yeah, how do you how do you deal with that with the people you work with with last second changes? I mean, like, do you try and use the same people to open or close? I mean, you know, how do you keep the routine solid so you have as much control as you can? In this situation, there was no – that we didn't foresee this coming. We didn't know. I think we found out around five o'clock, and showtime was at seven. That we had this, we had this um, unfortunate issue, and we did everything we could. So I was like, "Well, Monsky would just just go in and close it." So you have to be, you always have to be ready to perform at the drop of a hat. I mean, whether it's like, oh, "I'm so tired," like, "Oh man, I just this happened today. Oh, I got in a car accident, or oh, you're fighting with a spouse." It's like, oh, time to perform. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Phil Medina here. So do you draw upon those personal things? to Like, how do you decide, like, what topics are going to get the, the greatest relatability from your audience? Actually, at this point in the game, I do a lot of crowd work. So I talk to the audience a lot. Because I'm like, I, I've got a, 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 a knack for just being an incredible smartass. And, like, <laughs> I will just take a subject and just, I'll just ask you a question. Like, how long have you been in your relationship? How long have you are you are you you're married? Are you married? Yes. How long have you been married? Sixteen years. Really? I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> and I'm sorry to hear that because like that's a long time. And, and see, like right now she feels uncomfortable. But I can I can <laughs> I can't hide here. <laughs> uh it's a, that's that's a very long time to be married. And we're just gonna because you're giving me an eye right now. Because <laughs> <No, it's laughs> I have to go Same home work. tonight. Same Same work. Work. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> I got it. But no, it's, so you. I really just. I like to. I don't like to talk about like like topics that that are in the news right now. That's boring. Everybody does that. I want to tell you about me. I don't want to know about you. And then I'll give you my advice. That's so so refreshing, though, because I feel like that's rare that we hear that anymore. And yes, it's and we lose that connection because we have a different kind of connection with all the social media happening. So when you're doing live shows like that's something that's still kind of saved, you know, from all this other stuff that we have going on. Yeah, because I don't want to. I I uh, listen. Uh, CNN or Fox News has already told you what to think. I don't want to talk about that. I want. I'm I'm pretty selfish. I want to talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do for the hour that I'm talking. And that's 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 basically what it is. And even with Monsky now that he's doing comedy, the one piece of advice I gave him is like, don't talk about topics. Talk about you. Talk about your son. By the way, 
He's a United States Marine Corps combat vet. That's right. <laughs> that's what that's right. about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about you, Phil. You're selfish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's trying to bring it back. But both of you yeah. have done work. Did I have that right? That you used to... Um... He was in the Old Navy. Yeah. Did that oh, the Old Navy? I was in the Old Navy for four years. <laughs> Saw a lot of action in that, in that, in that store in Fresno. <laughs> no, but you, uh, who used to do um, I, I shows? Did, for... I did shows for the United States uh, Army. At Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas, four years in a row. Yeah. So those were those were like those were the, some of the best shows I ever did. See, we did work this back into being about Phil. You yes. see, that was yeah. <laughs> I give him a little, I just take it right back. Yeah. I'm like, not yet, son. <laughs> <laughs> so that's incredible. What was that like? How were, I mean, they look forward to that. Was it around holiday events? Uh, actually, it was in the summer. And I don't know if you've ever been to El Paso in the summer. That <laughs> joke was on me. <laughs> All right, it is like it's really Before hot. In an oven. Yeah, it's, it's and I and I grew up in, in 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 a very hot part of the country, but this was like a different kind of hot. You know, it's like um, it's hard. Have you ever like turned the oven on and just like open it like oh shit? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Too hot. Yeah, but there was no cookies baking, so it was just really disgusting. <laughs> and uh, but it's a dry heat. I don't even know what that means. But it was it, it's it's awful. <laughs> so when the but to entertain the United States Army and they were just coming back. From, from Afghanistan or Iraq. I don't remember where they were coming back from. They were just coming back. So to, to work with it, they're like, oh, you're so funny. I'm like, me? Let's not even talk about me. I go, you guys are awesome. And then they got me really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up at a, um, at a Whataburger at like 4 in the morning. And then I woke up again. In Fresno. <laughs> and then that was, yeah, and I had lost a shoe. They must so, have really liked your show. I, yeah, like I went back three more years. But it was uh, it was crazy. But it was a, a great experience to work with those to those people that were just, uh, you can't tell them thank you enough for being for doing what they're doing. So working with him, it's just, it, it's amazing. Because he's got that, that intestinal fortitude to drive forward. When I feel like, God, I cannot do this today. He's been on the road and they're like, dude, this sucks. This is not fun. And he just like cheers everything up. And, like, you, and you served in Afghanistan? In Iraq. In Iraq. Yeah, I was in, in the Marine Corps from 2000 to 2004. So in 2003, I was in Iraq for eight months. Wow. Yeah. So how has that motivated you or shaped you into into comedy? Um, I always tell people, uh, the comedy, uh, I, I, I always say that shaped me into comedy. It definitely gave me discipline. But I always told people that the Marine Corps was easy compared to the way I was raised. My mom was very disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, we're doing boot camp. I was like, you got? <laughs> this is all you got? My mom treated me worse. But, uh, Jesus. <laughs> but I love her. Because, Sorry, because of her. Sorry. But because of her, um, I am disciplined, you know, and I'm able to, you know, I, I think that's where I'm at where I'm at now. Is because I'm able to help people that are maybe <laughs> need a little help sometimes. Yeah, that's yeah. real talk. There's been times I can't even brush my teeth, and he's just right there with the toothbrush. <laughs> uh, he's. <laughs> does he hit, does he hit you with the, did he take that other shoe? Does he hit you? With no, it? he's never hit me yet. Uh, it's coming eventually. It's, gonna, it's coming for sure. It's coming. Yeah, there's gonna be a day he's just gonna like. You remember that Full Metal Jacket where they got the soap and they just beat the fat guy with it? Oh, it's coming. The pile. <laughs> I watched that the other night. Yeah, it's yeah. happening. <laughs> but, but but seriously, like within the core, right? There's a need amongst tense times on oh, combat course. for somebody to like be the you know the one who brings levity and tells jokes. Oh, Was that your role? Did you absolutely, find it? Yeah. absolutely? And it's funny because I, a lot of people, my, my brothers from the Marine Corps, still follow me, and they're just like, "We knew you would do something like that." Because back in the Marine Corps, you wouldn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's so they're like. We saw this coming, you know, like, we believe it, like, we can see you doing it, so, yeah, I was, that was me. In high school, I was a class clown, uh, my whole life, I was always told, you should be a comic, but I'm, I was like you, I was like, I, I, I don't, I, I can be funny, like, right here, but I, being on stage and having a uh, mic and having people staring at you, like, make me laugh, I'm like, that was scary, you know, I, I'm like, I don't want to do that. Then I met this gentleman right here. Uh, I, I, he I, uses I, that <laughs> term loosely. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I did online radio. I, I still do it. We still do podcasts and stuff like that. And uh, mutual friends like, hey, there's a comic. You should. He's funny. You should interview him. So we, we interviewed him. We became best friends immediately. Um, and right away, he's like, <laughs> immediately, <laughs> he's like, you should, uh, you should do comedy. And I was like, nope. So I, it took me, it took you about a year to get mm-hmm. me on stage and. And we are. <laughs> yeah, wow. and, and I've done some pretty messed up stuff to him on on the road. And <laughs> like we did it. We I took him to do that show in, in El Paso, El Paso yeah. at Fort Bliss, 
Uh, and there's none. The room was filled with army, uh, like army, like current army soldiers. So Phil th- had the great idea. Was like, you should tell them that you're in the you were a marine. <laughs> I was joking. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to do it. The first thing he did was like, you know, I mean, I say it's Marine Corps uh, combat vet. They just like stopped and just st- like glared at him like, you think you're better than us? Like, that's what he got. And Man, that, that, that to date is still my worst show. <laughs> I'm awkward. I, I did my five, at the time I was doing five minutes. Did not one laugh. It was like, wow. I'm like, thanks, Phil. And he set it up perfect for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. He did great. He did great. Yeah, they were just, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, don't ever listen to me. I'm drunk. Yeah. <laughs> so you like, wanted him to have physical, physically uncomfortable conditions and to be completely rejected. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, people need to understand that that happens in life. Right. So right. he needed to understand that that was his time. And how did you, how did you prepare for that first time on stage? Like, how long did it take you? You know, how much advice did you get? How much was original? Um, I'll be honest. The the my whole set, the, the the way I got, I got my set is because we travel a lot. You know what I mean? Like we were we were traveling for about a year, um, and hours in the car we're talking and we talk about like our past and I'm like, oh, my son did this or or this happened to me and he's like, dude, that is so funny. And that's you gotta, a joke. You gotta Answer use here. that, yeah. So so that's basically how I got my set. And, you know, just, just by listening to other people do comedy, you know, online and stuff like that, I kind of structured my, my thing. And But before I went on stage, I, at one time, I, I was like, this is my set. And he was like, okay, sounds good. And I was like, okay. There was a reason why I did that, though. Uh, he kept trying to read the, the, the set to me. And I, I would kind of brush him off, right. if you notice. Yeah, of course. I was doing that on purpose because <laughs> I didn't want to hear it because uh, I was busy. <laughs> and when, no. you, when you're playing Mario Kart on your phone, <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to hear it because uh, with the Santa unwritten Con- rules of Phil Medina, right? I like, don't yes. bother me when I'm playing Mario Kart. It's uh, I told him I, I, and now I'll tell you because I keep forgetting to tell you this. Oh, <laughs> it's been a year, so I might as well tell you right now. Um, the reason I didn't want to hear, and it's just, I did the same thing to Cedric, but I was a little nicer with Cedric because he looks, he kills somebody. Uh, <laughs> He's I was a little nice nicer. Guy. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> but you have to me listen, my approval on your jokes doesn't mean anything. Go up there and tell them. I'm not going to be able to tell you because I tell my joke one way, I tell it a certain way, I talk about my life. Go up there and tell your story. There's nothing I can do to help you at this point. You've already committed, you're set. That's why I just threw you out there. It's cause, and you did well. Right. Because if you don't do well that first time, what are you going to do? You're going to get discouraged. And just like Citric. That's why it's called beginner's luck. <laughs> yeah. And then Citric, same thing. Citric did great yeah. his first time. I don't know how he's going to do his second time. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Does he want you there? Does he ask you to be there? Well, actually, I've already booked him for another show because nice. he's he's really Cedric's such a great guy, and he deserves all of the the great things you know that come to him. Right. So, and I think that he's uh, he's going to do very well in this business. Just like I was so um, with Monsky, uh, we actually when we film those shows for that website, we actually make sure that the comic is seasoned. So I wasn't going to put him on for the two years. I was like, we've only been this a year, but we didn't. It didn't really come up. And then I just thought about it. I said, hey, are, you think you can handle this? And he's like, yeah, of course I can. I said. And inside I was like, oh, my God. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> so, what was, so what was that? So you're saying you were like, I can do this before the show with the Army? Oh, uh, no, you, this was for the television taping this uh, past weekend. Uh, he, was, he was just, uh, I told him, I said, if you think you're ready, I'll put you up and we'll do it. And I was very surprised because I knew he was going to do okay, but he did very well. And to have that in him. He did great. He did really good. Same thing with Citric. He did when they when the pressure was on those guys, they they can handle it. There's a lot of people that that want to pretend to be in the show business industry and they can't handle it. They can't handle the pressure. That's why Instagram's a great way to fake it till you make it, I guess. I don't know. But he's he's 100% on his way to doing some great things right along on. with Citric. Right so. on. There's nothing better than having a mentor and someone who's willing to Oh, I'm yeah, also going to be the demise of their career. I know this is You're setting them up. <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to destroy it as well. Oh, yeah. I'm that guy. Well, it's just like, you guys are doing good. It's over. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're going to do a lot of good things. But in all seriousness, how do you bounce back from that? So you get out there, your first five minutes is like, oh, man, I did, you know, I just bombed it. 
you know, what did, what did you draw upon? Like, how, how did you go back to the well and get back out there? The well, like you time? said, my, my first my first time being on stage was at Levy Live in front of 500 people, and I did very, very well, you know? So I already had that taste of doing well, you know? So and, and I've done play, how many shows did I do before that El Paso show? I've done quite a bit yeah, of shows I, before. Yeah, I put you up in Vegas and... And, uh, I had a few shows before that El Paso situation, you know what I mean? So I already had a taste of, like, hey, you know, if somebody, these people think I'm funny, more people are going to think I'm funny, you know what I mean? So I was just like, and he, he says that every, we all go through it, you know what I mean? Yeah, especially as new as I was at the time, still to this day, I'm still ready, you know, not to, to do not to do well, you just never know. But um, just drawing from the successes I've already had. That's an important point. So you right. don't you don't internalize. If one group is not laughing, it's not like it's not me. It's maybe it was this show. Maybe right. it was well, it, it the is, mic. It, maybe it's the sound. I mean, it, it is me because I, I'm the I'm the comedian. You know what I mean? I take full responsibility. But at the same time, every audience is different. You know what I mean? And the fact, uh, yes, we're all in the for people that are not in the military. Yes, we're all in the military. Yes, we're all fight for the USA. But there's a little you know chip on shoulders when you're you're in the Marines, you're in the Army, you're in the Air Force. You know what I mean? So I was like, I'm in the Marines. They were waiting like, the whole time for you. to <laughs> Bash them or something, you know. I don't know. They just want me to fail. I guess. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. And, and that's the thing, though. You just hit on it right now. A good performer will always take accountability and say, no matter what, that's my fault. If uh, if I sucked and I bombed, that's my fault because I'm the one with the mic. I'm the one with 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 the material coming out. If they didn't laugh, that's on me. That's not on anybody else. You can never blame the audience or the casting director. I, I auditioned for a TV show. I just ate it. And I knew from the beginning they didn't like me. But that was my fault. I was I was underprepared. I should have been a little more. I still got a call back. <laughs> he's just, he's uh, very critical of himself. He does amazing. He's like, I suck. Every time he gets off stage, well, I suck. There's a reason for that, too. And that might be a psychology thing because it's like I can't stand people who pat themselves on the back. Because the minute you become your own biggest fan, you have peaked. You're done. It's over. And I've only been doing this 10 years. And so I still got a, a long way to go. So if I'm the, my own biggest critic, I will continue to grow no matter if, if, if I get the standing ovations or whatever happens. I'm still gonna grow. I'm not so, gonna so stop. So, where does that come from for you? Where did where who who was your biggest critic, or did you see? Next question. Next question. Next question. No, it comes from it comes from home. It comes from from from, from you know the way you're raised. You know, just uh, you, uh, you you as you're a child, you're just you uh, the way I was brought up is just constant critiquing, constant, constant, constant. Uh, not as much love, but a lot of critiquing. Which I know my parents loved me. It wasn't that. But anyway. <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't that. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was just, it was a lot of critiquing. I mean, that's what it is. That was that, what that generation did. And uh, which I'm better for it now because now I get to go out and live my dreams. So that's it. I mean, was it, were they accepting when you were like, I want to do comedy? Did they, did they get it? Um, I think they were. My dad was more um, like, he was a big comedy fan. Like, we were five years old watching uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you do that now, CBS is at the house <laughs> checking out everything. But, uh, no, we were five years old watching Dice Clay. My dad, my dad is a huge stand-up fan. So, for his son, and I don't think they really bought into what I was doing until early this year. Uh, they drove uh, from their home. Uh, they live in a different state, came all the way to uh, Levity Live Oxnard, and it was sold out, and they got to see me perform. It was your birthday show. Yeah, it was my birthday wow. show. And it was it was phenomenal. And then they were like, oh, <laughs> shit, no wonder. <laughs> 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 so that's that's what where they're now they're on board. Now they're on board. I mean, because uh, I've, I've even been in a short film and stuff, and I don't think they really got it. Until they, they came they live, never, and I feel like I still haven't had that "you got it" moment. Right, there are right. Certain people for it to click. What are you doing with all your time? Exactly. I, when I jumped into professional wrestling, when I was when I started in the wrestling industry in 1998, they were like, "You're not doing this." I was like 18 years old. Like, no, you're not. You're no. You're gonna go to college. You're gonna. I'm like, but this is not what I want to do. I don't want to go to college. I want to do this. And they were like, uh, no. 
<laughs> you and they were they, I, I did what I did and I went to the training camps and I did the matches and everything and then I was like okay I'm done this hurts and this you have to be in like top physical shape to do this and I was just a little chubby kid now I'm a fat adult but I mean that's I don't know why you keep asking but it's <laughs> so this was the Lucha Extreme experience this was actually something in uh, in 1998 where I went to become a professional wrestler wow and the Lucha Extreme thing happened on a whim like, that was so weird how that thing happened. That was uh, in 2015. I was do- promoting a show, and we had, like, 500 people in the, in the building, and those guys were in the audience. And the, the, the owner of the company was in the audience, and I was really drunk that night. And I think I threw a chair. Uh, and I don't drink anymore. So that <laughs> They was, saw was, the wrestling form they come like, back. Well, they liked my voice. They said, hey, do you, have you ever been a ring announcer? I said, no, I've always wanted to do that. And they're like, okay, well, we're doing this show at Chuck Chansey Park in front of thousands of people. Would you like to do it? I said, yeah, sure. So I did it. Within a month, I was their lead play-by-play announcer, uh, the host of their television show. And I did that for, for two years. So it wasn't until 2017 I finally... That's it. We're done. So can yeah. we get like your best? Uh, let's get ready to rumble, or what would you? No, say? not right now. My voice is really raspy. And <laughs> I don't want to end up just ruining my vocal cords. I've got a, I've got a I sing uh, at a church choir on the weekends. So he does it all. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite line though? Did you have one? Were you allowed to like get creative with it? No, it was um, it, it, it was really weird doing the play by play. If you if you've ever seen a play by play announcer. Uh, whether it's basketball, football, that is such an intense job because you are talking the entire time. So when you say, oh, sunset flip, oh, cover one, two, oh, he barely kicks out. Look at that. The abs on him are beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Are you supposed to cut that? Why that (laughs) hair? There's been, and there has been, I mean, it was so watching that action and calling it as, as, that is that was that might be the hardest thing I've ever done in show business. That was really hard, um, and it was weird. The reason I left that promotion was because it was just it was time to move on. And as an entertainer, you kind of just know. It's like okay, I think I've co- I've accomplished everything I want to do here. Eh, time to move on. Now I'll see what happens next. And then next thing I know, I'm in Southern California, hanging out with this guy. Even I did Lucha Extreme a couple oh, times. Oh, that's right. I did bring him on to do it. <laughs> I was and, the color commentator for what, two, show, two of them. Yeah. And, and you were player. like, I like the hanging out with Motsky part, but the wrestling can go. <laughs> yeah, the wrestling was, it just got weird. Like it was, um, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. As, as, as a child, like that's what even want, that's what got me into show business. Because I loved the WWE. It was just such a, uh, an amazing experience to watch that as a kid. And as you see my eyes lighting up yeah, right totally. now, it's like uh, I'll go home tonight and just watch wrestling, old 80s wrestling, until I fall asleep. That's <laughs> just what I do. You know, some people smoke marijuana, and I, I smoke marijuana and watch wrestling. I caught something <laughs> you said, though. It was kind of like it didn't, you know, wrestling didn't serve you anymore, right? So it's kind of like you felt that you conquered that arena maybe, and so you wanted to close that chapter and go on to the next, right? Right, but I mean, if WWE called tomorrow and said, hey, would you like to be a ring announcer or whatever, I'm like, uh, yes, <laughs> whatever it takes. But it still makes sense because uh, it still adds to, you know, what you're currently doing today. Yeah, it, it, it does, but you know, when I don't know if you've ever had that feeling that where you're just like, okay, I'm done with this. Like, it's Now it's time to... Change hats and let's do something else. But for you, is that process kind of uh, just in the flow kind of a thing? Like you just knew it or do you like need to have a plan for where you're landing next? No, I just knew it. It's just the way I quit my job was the same way. Like I had known that um, I had talked to a very good friend of mine, Richard Villa, uh, and he told me, he goes, you're just going to know. You're going to know because that alarm clock's going to go off. You're going to know that it's uh, it's time to stop what you're doing and to stand up full time. The alarm clock went off at four o'clock and I turned it off. No, it went off at two 30. I turned it off and I went back to sleep. I didn't even go to work that day. They called me and asked me where I was at. I said, I'll be in on Monday to talk about it. So, uh, I came in, I told them I quit. They go, give us a two week notice. I go, that's fine. I'll come back in two weeks and tell you I quit again, <laughs> um, but I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, my last day I went in, it wasn't even my last day. It was the next day that Friday I went in um, I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm really done. Like, I put the keys in the safe already. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Just finish your shift. I go, okay. And I just, like, walked out. I was done. And that was that was the end of, of a 20-year career. And then I, I was already set to move to Southern California. 
and that was it. And now here I am. Wow. And just um, I still don't know what I'm doing. But I, it's and uh, he moved to Southern California, not knowing anybody in the area that he moved to. No, no plans. He was just like, yeah, hey, just showed up. And then it was it was really funny because we went to the big comedy club there, and they basically told me, no, we don't want your show. There's nothing you can do for us. You're brand new in the area. Nothing you can do. So did you have a moment of like, oh, I should turn back and groceries looks good? Or I, I was just about to go apply at Ralph's. And and uh, then, uh, then I said, okay, hold on. So I went to the smaller comedy club. And they said, yeah, we'll give you a shot. And I sold it out the first time. And then 14 times after that in a row. I sold it out. Then the big comedy club said, hey, buddy, <laughs> right. we like you. So then I started doing shows over there, and we had consecutively 13 sellouts at Levity Live Oxnard uh, in a row. No one's done that. Every month, 13, uh, till, uh, till recently, till we moved back to the smaller club for the tapings. So um, what's the Phil Medina formula? Because that must have been terrifying, I mean, to be kind of on your own. But you at the same time, like, you know, the, the message was there. It's time. It's uh, it's step up. It's time. I was going to say, if that wasn't there, you wouldn't have done Exactly. It. If I didn't have that that drive to say, okay, I'm not going to fail. I've failed already. I've already done this stuff. I've already gotten my nose out of the way. It's time to go out and do this. Uh, I was going out like I was running for mayor. Like shaking hands, kissing babies, uh, uh, giving comedy show tickets, just introducing myself to the community. Before I knew it, they were turning 100 people away at the door uh, the first time. And now anytime we're at Levity, it's sold out. It's And that's not just Levity. I mean, that's the Ontario Improv. I had three headline nights there, sold out. Hollywood Improv, three headline nights, sold out. Um, it's uh, Where else have we been? I mean, Fresno, we were just there. In August, and we sold over a thousand tickets to see wow. me, and it was like, oh, are "You guys sure? <laughs> you want your money back?" Now, how do you do? You guys, how do you adapt to your different audiences, or do you not? Do you still keep everything all about you? And yeah, it has to come back to us because, just like I said, that it's um, it's your fault if you if you if you blow it. It's also going to be on me. To, to know what I need to do. There's no adapting, though. I'm going to tell you about me. He's going to tell you about him. Terrence Washington is going to tell you about him. That's another guy we work with, a uh, really good friend of ours. He's going to tell you about him. And if you um, like us, you're going to laugh. And if you don't, then just please eat your fries quietly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're speaking to the authenticity of being who you are. Right. And, and they brought you there to be who you are. At the same time, you spoke about preparing and knowing your audience, right? And always, always being type A in that way. So, so how do you adjust when you're in a, you know, a smaller state or um, for the military, for instance? Well, well, if you think about it, we're all the same. Like that's that's basically. I mean, we're all the same. We've been through the same stuff. Nobody's really that different. I mean, if you if you've been married a long time, then you know. The, some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about. And if you if you have kids, you know some of the stuff. I'm going to say why I hate kids. Uh, I mean, do you have, you have children? I do. do you, okay, how old are your kids? <laughs> I'm laughing already. I'm laughing already. <laughs> Get me out of the gun. Um, uh, the, uh, 15, 10, and 10. Oh, okay, so you got like, you got, you got. Like young adults living with you got like almost voters. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have kids? I don't have kids. Okay. Do you like kids? Sometimes. Yeah, I don't have kids. I hate kids. <laughs> and I just don't know. I just don't like them because they're little jerks. Well, yeah, and, and you and can give them back at the end of the day. That's well, great. No, even if you, well, no, I think that's kidnapping. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> um, I just, I, I, I have two nieces I love very much, but are also very, very, um, they're very sweet. And if you, if you come to one of my shows, they're very bossy too, and little kids um, have no filters, and they will tell you like like I thought it'd be a great idea to rent a smart car and to, to take my niece driving up and down the the, the 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 PCH, and she told me I would look like Donkey Kong from Mario Kart. How how am I not supposed to grab that child and kick her like right through the forks? You know how do you do that? But. It's uh, so those are the things. Like if I'm gonna sit there, if I if I'm in 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 uh, El Paso, Texas, or if I'm in Denver, Colorado, we're gonna relate. We're gonna relate because I'm not gonna talk about your politics. You're not gonna hear about what I feel. Uh, I never talk about that. Uh, you're just gonna know. You're gonna learn to love me. 
and that's it. And if you don't, then I'm sorry, but there's no refunds on the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so it's nice. It's uh, it's 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 fun though. If you're not having fun, then it's it makes it hard, you know. I mean, then you then you might as well just get a nine to five job. Not that I don't respect people with nine to five jobs. I think that's we need that. You gotta make the world go round. But what does that mean? Does that mean like ten minutes before he calls the police? We're <laughs> 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 kidnapping. Don't mention CPS and kidnapping. I just want all of our listeners to feel like they're really in the it's room. It's a color code system here. <laughs> yeah, it's like that was red. a yellow card. Like a, you know about soccer. That's what a yellow card is, dude. Like you get two of those. What yeah. happens? Are we getting out of here? <laughs> 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 I played soccer as a kid Did for you? like a day. And I told my mom, there's a lot of running in this. And that's when she was like, I know, Gordo, that's why we put you here. And yeah, that was the last of that. I, <laughs> faked, I faked an injury and I was done. When I, when I was a kid, I wanted to play baseball. And my mom's like, oh, you, you, I was you know, I was a chubby kid. And she's like, that's too much running. So she put me in soccer. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. So I played soccer for, you know, for a couple years. You did it for a couple years? I did it for six years, I think. I played 15 years. Yeah. In soccer, yeah. <laughs> you guys played too hard. I used to just stand in one place. If the ball came, I kicked it. I was like a foosball thing, oh, you know? You've know? <laughs> always seen our producer to our listeners run down the hallway laughing at that one. Oh, yeah, because I was just like 15. Years of running. <laughs> you sound like my grandmother. <laughs> Who was chasing you? Yeah. <laughs> La Migra. No, yeah. <laughs> Ice was chasing her. They never caught her. <laughs> She's in Texas. <laughs> but you mentioned you mentioned a very important thing, Phil, which is having fun at what you do and what you're passionate about. Right. And how do you, you know, maintain that balance between being driven, being focused, always improving and, and you know, the self-critical aspect and then also keeping it that you're enjoying your experience? You know, I'm working towards something. Goals. I have goals. I don't believe in dreams. I believe in goals. You set your goal and that's what I'm working towards. I just said it. I got two nieces, which I joke around about them a lot. But I love those two little girls. And I got one that's uh, my sister's. They're both my sister's kids. But one of them is trying to go to UCLA. And I said, I'm going to try everything I can to do to pay for this. Uh, that's $65,000 a semester. <laughs> so it's like... Uh, a semester. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and you got three kids. <laughs> so, congratulations, sir. Uh, so, so that's something that like... So I'm, I'm driven. So... And I'm so motivated, man. I mean, and, and basically because of him. He got me to that motivational level of, like, positivity and, and, and the, way, the way everything works. I mean, every day I read a, a page out of The Secret, the book. Every day I do that. Every day I'm, I'm listening to Tony Robbins or Les Brown, and I'm, I'm just listening to motivational. And, it, and it's, it's so funny because when you're in this business, it's almost like they're talking to you. Like exactly. It is. I do that every morning, and I'm glad you said that I listen to all those on YouTube, or I just put it in when I'm doing my workout, right. just so I can hear the positive affirmations and yes. set my standard or my 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 mood for the day. Right. Absolutely. And that's the thing when you when uh, a positive affirmation that's the that's the biggest thing is, and I do that too. Like it's all because of him. He showed me how to do. Because there was a time when I was when I was sitting at the beach in Oxnard, and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's not working out. And then I just thought, I was like, wait a minute. I can do this. I can make this happen. And then he came into my life. I started working with Terrence uh, Washington. Then I started just everything fell right into place. And the more I believed it, the more things happened. It was just one thing after another. And it's been steamrolling since uh, two years. Yep. Two years now. So, so, that's, so that's interesting because even though you're type A, that sometimes you know high performers go through a transformative moment where it's like, I need help. I need something to help this, this process work. And, you know, maybe you needed more of that connection or, or a team. I think that that type A personality was something that was um, delivered upon uh, two years ago is when I really got serious, where I put this business before everything. And there's nothing above it. Um, and it sucks that I'm that way, but that's just the way it is. Um, and I'm always going to be that way from now on. I mean, because it, it was, again, why do I wake up at 430 every morning? You know, why do I do that? Why am I checking my emails? Well, at 4.30 in the morning, people are on Facebook at that time. Getting ready to go to work. I'm sending them a message. Hey, come to my show. 
You're like, Jesus Christ, it's late, it's 4 3 in the morning. I don't care, come out. Why am I looking at like different venues? Why am I doing this? I'm getting a jump before everybody else. That wasn't always the case. I was a big, I used to use alcohol so much. I would, I had an issue with cocaine and pills. And it's, and he's like, are you still on cocaine? <laughs> no, but it was, it was, those were, those were things that were like, I was in the party aspect of the whole thing. You can't make money doing that. You can't be successful doing that. And, um, stopped all that, moved out here, met him. And then everything, everything has been going like just amazing. Um, and, and I don't think I'll ever stop being that guy. That's incredible. Uh, Those are not small so. shifts. I mean, what would you say to someone who's out there who's struggling with, you know, getting a little bit too heavy into the partying aspect? Run out of money first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? If, if, if you really want to do this and you really want to take this serious, you, perf- you performing uh, in little city plays and you're partying all the time or you performing at little bar shows uh, and, but you're partying all the time, stop and just look. have tunnel vision. And focus straight ahead. And stay in your own lane. Don't worry about what other people are doing. And find out your why. Why, why are you going to do it? Why are you going to change? That's the key, I think, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, my, my uh, See, that's that's, that's, that's the right second time. Yeah, I know. That is the second <laughs> time I've seen those cards. <laughs> They're almost outside. They're going to run. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> why are you, what, are, what are you taking? No. Yeah, why do you have a card that says, help? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, man. Yeah, and Mochi's right. Find your why. Why do you? And you know all this stuff already. Oh, yeah. Find your why. And here's the greatest thing. I found out what my why is. I'm my why. I'm my why. I, yes, I want to pay for college for my niece to go to school. And, and yeah, I want to accomplish a bunch of stuff. But I'm my why. I am the reason why I'm getting up every morning to, to become successful. It's me. It's because I know where I was. And now I know where I'm at and where I'm headed. So those that became my why. And if you can live like that, then you can accomplish anything. So, are you? Have you read the the book Find Your Why? Have you Have you guys? No, I haven't. Have you read that book? No, I tapped into it. Yeah, so it's a really great. It's great that you bring it up because it's been on the you know the Richard Listens reading list. It's got Simon Sinek who did uh, Start with Why, and then he's got Find Your Why. And so it's interesting how it goes from being this kind of personal meaning thing into like getting deeper into why do you do this for people? Because it's mm-hmm. it is such a gift. You know, I'm thinking about before. You got here today, and I'm like, man, I can't do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, my, my why is talking to people and getting a deeper understanding about what motivates and drives them. But right. to do what you do, to be able to give that gift to people, um, to break down whatever their story is about having kids or being parents, you know, whatever their same old is, I mean, it is a gift to alleviate pressure or stress and bring joy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is... For me, it's like more, there's nothing better than seeing somebody laugh. I mean, I had a lady in Hollywood uh, not too long ago. Uh, she told me that, uh, that her mom really enjoyed me. And if I would take a picture with her mom. And I said, and her mom, and her mom was just laughing. She said, I mean, I saw him in the front row just having a great time. Then I felt the mom, found out the mom had uh, Alzheimer's. So that was like, wow, to be able to, she, uh, it wasn't an issue at the time. For her, for her to have Alzheimer's, just laughing and having such a good time. Because I guess it was something new that they were starting to deal with. And uh, to me, that's just, that's just, uh, <laughs> uh, that that is amazing to yes. be able to have that. That's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, to be able to pe- make them forget about their issues for that hour or 45 minutes, whatever it is, that's, that's a very sweet thing to do, have to be able to do. Indeed. So. How about for you, Motsky? Likewise, I always same with you. Like I told you, I do online radio. I used to love to, to interview people and find out their whys and why they do what they do. Um, doing comedy, it's also amazing to see people laugh. You know, so uh, I, instead of interviewing one person and, and and getting their why, I'm able to to make 500 people laugh at the same time. So I, I kind of like comedy. I'm getting into the comedy side better. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's all about connection. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So they're giving us uh, the, the two-minute warning here uh, on the show. So tell us a little bit about what you guys are up to. I see the Solid Kings, what uh, your new uh, venture you guys are launching out on, and how people can get a hold of you and, and connect to your joy more. It's really easy. If you, if you look up uh, at Comic Phil Medina or Monsky805, uh, you can see what we got going on. We just recently we were, hi- we were hired by uh, 
KZAA 96.5 FM in Santa Barbara to be the new morning show, the Phil Amonsky Show, which is on iTunes right now. Uh, we'll be moving over to KZAA 96.5 in Santa Barbara starting January the 7th. Yes. They can hear that. Or if any time, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see that we are very busy. And there's anything ever we can do to help you guys out, we'll definitely do it. Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. And thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank I you, mean, sir, for having us. Uh, the fact you're a friend of uh, Citric and, and already that our guests are helping each other, it's like, you know, now We're I got to go. family now. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I got to go out and do something even more uncomfortable. You know? Yeah, let's Jump get up. Richard up on stage. <laughs> let's do it. That's it, yeah. Well, I say, I say, let's do it. I'll be, I'll be at the Brea Improv on February 12th, headlining that night. Why don't you guys come out? And we'll see. Maybe we can see what you got. See how you can embarrass us? Let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's a joy having you today. For all our listeners, thanks for um, being here in our new location. We're going to have a special guest next Monday. We'll let our uh, social media experts uh, surprise you with that. We'll be here Mondays in studio, 6 p.m. You can find us on Facebook slash Richard Listens, iTunes, or Spotify, and uh, send us off, Caitlin. Yeah, so no, thank you guys so much for being here. I love how much you talked about personal connection and how much I could relate to just being in entertainment and or just being a human. And it's so great to have great, successful people like yourselves on our show to share your stories. So thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank yeah, you. and you, of course, can find me at Kit Kate on Instagram and CaitlinPatriciaWeiler.com. And always a pleasure to be on Richard Listen. Thank you. And thanks for your service, Monsky. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> thank Take you. care, everybody. Take care. And we're out.